there's two main types of costs that we're going to talk about today. Fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are costs that do not change as you produce more output. So these are the things you don't need more or you can't get more of if you want to produce more of something today or that you can't cut back on if you need to. So fixed costs are in the short run are things like your building lease. So even if you can't run, like there's a lot of businesses right now who aren't open or aren't permitted to be open and therefore they still have to pay their building lease. That hasn't changed. So even though they're producing nothing, they still pay their lease. Uh, similarly, you still have to have some type of machinery, depending on what you're producing, you might need them. And whether you're baking, say, let's talk about a bakery, whether you're making one loaf of bread or 20 loaf of breads in a day, you need an oven, right? And so that changes your fixed cost. However, in the long run, because in the long term, you can change how much you have of something, right? You can look for a different building, you can expand your building, you can shrink your building, um, you can add to the number of ovens you have. All of those things can be changed in the long run. So no cost is actually fixed in the long run. In fact, the definition of long run is however long it takes for your costs not to be fixed anymore. In general, for most businesses, that's about five to ten years. Um, some may be shorter, but in general, if you're talking about an expansion project, it takes time to plan and implement and all of that. Whereas variable costs are things that do change as you produce more. And so variable costs are things like your raw materials. So if we're talking about our bakery here, um, flour and yeast and um, whatever else we need to make our loaves of bread. Um, electricity, right? If you are going to make more loaves of bread than normal, you just use more electricity to power that oven. Okay? You can literally flip on a switch to get more electricity when you want it. Workers. Those are things that you can have more of, especially if you're talking work hours, right? You can have your workers work more hours or fewer hours. Um, right now we see how variable that is for certain industries, right? Because workers are at home instead of working. And then variable costs in the long run would be all costs. So even things like a building lease um, or buying new machines, stuff like that is something you can adjust in the long term, and therefore all costs are variable in the long term. Total cost is just the sum of these two. So every cost is either a fixed or a variable cost, not both, and, or at least it can become switched from being one to the next, but in the same instant in time, it is not both fixed and variable. But when you put those two numbers together, it gives you your total cost. And then just as a little refresher, because you've heard the words total cost before, this is the same as the type of total cost we were talking about at the beginning of the course. So it's your marginal costs um, is the incremental change in total cost as you produce more. So that's the same total cost from before. Now we're going to look at what these costs are in terms of an average sense. So whenever a company is looking at their fixed costs or variable costs or total costs um, and how this changes as they produce more. They don't care as much about the total number of each of these things as they do about how it changes per unit. And because the per unit part is um, the important part, average just means per unit. So for all of these formulas, we're just going to divide by the number of items produced. So for average fixed cost, that's just whatever your fixed cost number is divided by Q. Now, since that fixed cost is a fixed number that isn't changing when Q changes, as quantity rises, average fixed cost falls. And it does this because our fixed cost is constant. And eventually, that change in Q is going to, as you increase Q, this average fixed cost change is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller until it is practically constant itself. So when you graph it in a little bit, we'll see that it goes down steeply and then it just kind of hugs our, ass, our um, axis. So then average variable cost is the variable cost divided by the amount produced. But variable cost does change, right? That goes up as you produce more. So at first, 
our average variable cost does indeed decrease because our variable costs aren't going up dramatically. But then your variable costs are going to start increasing more and more because you're going to have to start buying higher and higher value resources um, to be able to produce what you need to produce. And so that makes your variable costs rise at a faster rate eventually. And so average variable cost falls and then rises because at first our variable cost increase is slower than our quantity increase, but not always. So they're going to switch. And where they switched is at the minimum. So it's this U-shaped curve, and it has a minimum where average variable costs intersects with our marginal cost curve. So you'll see these graphs or these pictures in a graph in just a moment. And then average total cost is total cost over quantity, or the same as fixed costs and variable costs in their average forms put together as well. And so it's going to do a combination of these things. As quantity rises, average total cost is going to fall and then rise, just like average variable cost. However, because the average fixed cost is in there, that minimum is going to be at a higher quantity than it was for average variable costs. And so again, this is because it combines average fixed cost and average variable. Since it puts the two together, it has a combination of those two impacts. And it's going to be U-shaped, and it, its minimum is also going to be where it intersects with the marginal cost curve. Now let's look at some pictures. So our first curve we're going to draw is average fixed costs, which is just our fixed cost divided by Q. So remember, fixed cost is a fixed number. It's not changing as Q changes. And so it has a graph kind of like 1 over x. Looks a little bit like this. Average variable cost has a very different shape because variable cost does not stay constant. And total cost will be similar. We're going to draw these in just a minute. It's going to help to draw these if we have our marginal cost curve in. So technically, before we did marginal cost, we only talked about how it was upward sloping. However, at very low quantities, it does have a little bit of a decrease before it starts increasing forever. So if we're being accurate, we should draw marginal costs a little more like this. So we didn't draw that hook at the bottom in earlier section or earlier when we talked about it because there wasn't really much of a point um, in talking about that area. No one operates down there. You're going to be higher than that in most cases. Okay, so then our average variable costs um, could be anywhere. We'll draw it here. Okay. So it intersects and is U-shaped around that minimum point as it crosses marginal cost. It may or may not cost average fixed cost. I just happen to have it sketched that way in this one. These are not overly precise um, at this point at least. And then when we talk about getting our average total cost in, so since it's the sum of these two, if we wanted to graph what average total cost was at this quantity, we would take the height of this curve and the height of this curve and add them together, and we would end up with a point up here. And if we did that for all of them, we would get our average total cost, which should look a little something like this where it goes there. So I'm going to get rid of those lines. They were just measuring the height um, so that we could get a plot of our average total cost. Now, in general, when you're sketching these curves to solve problems, you're not going to draw in your average fixed cost. You're going to leave that one out. This is really the one you're going to draw. It's kind of like a fishbone. Um, if you had to do a quick sketch of it, it would look a little something like that. So that's just the very quick sketch version to help you um, know that not all of them you need this. So now we're going to talk through in our next slide um, how to use this information in a practicing situation of a sample company so that 
if you aren't completely sure, you don't buy into the fact that the minimum of the average variable and average total is where it hits marginal cost, I've got some numbers. There's nothing special about the numbers um, other than they follow the other laws like the shape of marginal cost and that sort of thing. So you'll get some hands-on experience next. So looking at this worksheet that you can get from Canvas right under the notes outline, you should go ahead and get it. And if you have access to a printer, print it. If not, then just edit right on it or sketch it out on a piece of paper. It's not that hard to copy over. Um, I'm going to sort of talk you through how to do some of these different uh, calculations. So first, we're going to start off with fixed costs. Fixed costs do not change as output changes, so fixed costs for all of them are going to be 100. So you can just pull that 100 all the way down. Our variable costs are given to us, and so total cost is fixed costs plus variable costs. So for our first one, you can see it was 100 plus 0 gives you 100. Then 100 plus 10 gives you 110, 100 plus 16 gives you 116, 100 plus 21 is 121, 100 plus 26 is 126, and keep going to finish filling in by adding those two together. Marginal cost is our change in total cost. So going from 100 to 10 is a change of 10. Going from 100 to 116 is a change of 6. 116 to 121 is a change of 5. 121 to 126 is a change of 5 again. And from this point on, you should see them start going up and just keeping looking at those changes between each of the total costs. Average fixed costs is fixed costs divided by Q. So for our first one here that we can find it for, that would be 100 divided by the Q of 1, which is just 100, right, because that's our fixed cost. Our next one is our fixed cost of 100 divided by Q, which is 2, so that's 50. Then this next one is 100 divided by 3, which is 33.3. .3. And then 100 divided by 4, which is 25. And so keep on going, taking 100 and dividing by whatever the quantity is, and finish that one out. Average variable cost is variable cost divided by Q. So our variable cost for one unit was 10. Our variable cost for two units is 16. 16 over 2 gives us 8. Our variable cost for three units over here is 21 divided by 3 gives us 7. Then we have 26 divided by 4, giving you ooh, whatever that is, 6 and a half. Yeah. And finish out by taking what's ever in the variable cost column and dividing by the Q that goes with it and finish them all out to 13. Average total cost, you can either take total cost and divide by Q, or you can take average fixed cost and add average total cost. Either way works. So I'm going to do the second method. So here we have 100 plus 10 giving us 110. Then you've got 50 plus 8 giving you 58. 33.3 plus 7 giving you 40.3. 25 plus 6.5 gives you 30.1. And keep going to get the rest of them. And so that chart you'll then use for the graph. So the graph is over here to the right. Um, you can see it goes fairly far. But you, it may or may not have numbers. Mine's looking kind of funny here. And so I zoomed in a lot so that you could see the bottom. But each of these refers, this should be your quantity on this axis, where this represents a quantity of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and this last line is a quantity of 13. And then we'll use the numbers on these axes to represent all of our costs. So these are in dollars. For, and for this, you're not gra or graphing the fixed cost, total cost, or variable cost. You're only doing marginal cost, average fixed cost, average total, 
an average variable. Now for the average fixed cost, your first one is not going to quite fit in the graph. So let's zoom out and go up. Our first average fixed cost. I'm trying to slide a little bit. Okay. Our first average fixed cost there we see is at 100, but our graph only goes up to 54. And since the graph only goes to 54, we can't plot that one. The next one, though, is 50. So we can start at 2 and 50, which is right here. And then you go over one more down to 33. So your next plot is going to be more like here. And then you'll finish plotting all of them once you have all the numbers calculated, of course, and then just connect the dots and you should see similar shapes. And then move on to the next one. I recommend using multiple colors just so that you can tell them apart. Um, I don't have that option right now, so it's going to be red. Um, but then you would move to your average variable cost, which starts at 10 and then eight and 7.5. So it's a lot smaller. It starts here at 10 and 8. Oop, that's not 8. 8. I skipped one too. Don't go too fast. 7, 6.5, and so on. And then you'll connect them for your average variable cost. They should start off looking a little something like that. Then you move to your average total cost. Again, 110 doesn't fit. 58 actually doesn't fit. But our third point of 40.3 does. So you go over to 3. And just above 40 is your first point. And then 31.5 would also fit. So it's there. And so then you would want to just finish all those off and connect them to get your average total cost. But don't forget marginal cost because that's an important part of our graph too. So it starts at 10 for 1 and then 6 and 5 and 5. And so it actually starts at this same point there. And then it goes to 6 and 5 and 5 and then it's going to start doing something different after that so your marginal cost looks like this but then it'll curve back up and re-intersect some things so finish out the table and sketch I can only start the sketches because I don't have all of them but finish it out give it a sketch um, and I'll post the answer so you can make sure there are these questions down here that's talking about the shape um, it's just really trying to make you or help you remember how they're shaped and what happens to them so you can get go back to the notes and be able to get some more detailed answers.